Well, hi folks, this is Darren from My RV Works. This afternoon, we're in Port Angeles, Washington, and we're gonna be working on this Class C right here. Now, I have a special surprise for you. I have a guest. Uh, we're gonna have the customer explain what the problem is. I figured that the best thing. Normally, when I do my videos, uh, I've already had a dialogue with the customer. The customer's explaining to me the problem, and then I explain it to you. So I figured on this video, let's have the customer explain it directly, and then I have not even looked at the problem. I mean. Yes, I grab my tools and I'm like, hey, this is a great opportunity for a video to do one of these discovery finds um, because there's a possibility that you might have the same thing. You take your RV to the dealership and you get it back and the darn thing don't work. So let me introduce you to Luke. Luke is a customer and he's gonna explain what the problem is. So here's the lavalier. You can clip it on your you clip it on here. thing. All right. Well, hello everybody. Uh, hi, YouTube. Hi. Um, <laughs> so this is uh, my wife and I's Quantum RW28 that we got just over a year ago. And uh, it's had a few issues, but we had some, some things come up on our last trip that uh, it was almost to the year and we wanted to get these warranty issues fixed before our first year was over. So we took it to the dealership to have them do a few things. And um, they were supposed to replace a wall that had come loose. And it's five hours to the dealership from where we live. So it's a pain in the butt to get out there and uh, have them do any work. So we were reluctant to do it so we waited right to the end of the year but anyway they replaced the wall and they thought they could do it in a day and they just barely got the wall done in a day but in the process of changing the wall it happens to be the wall where the control panel switches are for like the lights and the awning and the awning light and things like that and uh turns out they broke this switch which is just a little rocker switch that controls the awning they said when they were taking it all apart some of the pins popped off the back and you can see that there's only three on here there's supposed to be six and unfortunately they did not have this in stock at the dealership which seems silly because it's just a little rocker switch seems pretty simple and um, they didn't have any so I told them to mail it to me and uh, that I would try and do it myself seemed like a pretty simple thing to hook up some wires to the back of the switch well I hooked them up and guess what the awning still doesn't work so um, that is why I am here with Darren today to see if he can determine what is wrong with my awning so yay Okay, folks, so here we are. Here's the scene of the crime. Uh, the wall that the dealership um, did. I mean, this is, I'm not gonna trash dealerships. I, I kind of learned how to do this at a dealership, but my overwhelming re um, experience from dealing with the thousands of customers that we've literally had over the last nine years of doing this kind of work is, and tell me if I'm not correct in this, People are having a hard time getting really good quality work done at dealerships. Um, if you're a dealership watching this, take note that the news that I'm hearing out in the field is that the work that's being done at dealerships is, is subpar and a lot of the folks that I interface with are, are not happy with the work that's being done there. And to be on a side note, that's one of the reasons why I branched out and um, started my own company. Um, on a side note to that side note, is I'm a full-time RVer myself. A lot of you know that. We've been full-timing since 2007. And um, I needed some work done on my RV and I was having a heck of a time trying to find a dealership that was reputable, that could do all the kind of work I did. And that's kind of how I became doing it myself. And here we are today with My RV Works Incorporated. And I wrap my business around the concept that I want to be the kind of tech that I would want to find myself. Okay, so if, if that makes sense to everybody, uh, I don't think I'm better than anybody. I just think that I want what everybody else wants. And so I decided to start a business with that. So enough on the commercial for My RV Works, but my point and the takeaway from this is, that's a brand new wall covered by warranty and there's something wrong with this picture here folks so not only did they do that now i've looked at this wall before we started rolling film and it seems to me that what they did was they used a pneumatic nailer and they had the air turned up too much so the nail that they went in went right through this right into the wood and it didn't you need to adjust your air pressure on these guns here so we'll deal with this but the problem we're having here i've taken the cover off already and um it, okay so here's the um the awning switch right here and there's no awning coming on okay and uh, so it looks like they got the wires on so if you've watched my other videos if you're a fan and you subscribe and you get all my other videos then what are we going to do all together now follow the trail we're going to go hunting if you like to hunt or fish we just got to find the right bait if you like to hunt we got to pick up the scent and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be following the trail of 12 volts here's what we expect to find i don't know what's in this thing but we're going to expect two of these or one of these wires to have 12 volts right? We need to find that wire. Find the wire that's got 12 volts. You can't really go by the color codes here. You have to use a meter because the meter is going to allow you to see the voltage, okay? So we're going to find that 
and I've got a couple different meters that we might play with, but the one I think I'm gonna use on this project is something called a power probe. Let me introduce the power probe. So I think, yes, I've got my Fluke 325 here. I've got this meter here that I like. It's my three, fluke, fluke 325. We might use that one, but I think for this project, I'm going to use a power probe. Um, now in an upcoming video, if you subscribe, you'll see this in an upcoming video. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be covering meters in tremendous depth to ad nauseum. <laughs> um, I'm going to go through a bunch of different meters, but the video is not so much going to be on meters as it is going to be on there's an electrical problem and we need to figure out what it is and what are we going to use for that? We're going to use a meter. Um, I've seen a couple meter video, uh, videos where people teach meters and they're, they're approaching it from the perspective of here's a meter and here has, here's how you use it. My approach on this upcoming video is going to be here's an electrical problem and here's how we're going to find the problem using a meter. So a little backwards. So on this one, I'm going to use a power probe. Now this one's the uh, power probe three. Um, and I've got a link in my description below. You can go to my website, go to my tools thing. You can get these on Amazon. Show, throw some love Darren's way if you don't have one and you want one. Hey, you're going to pay the same, but I get Amazon sends me a little, little percentage and it's nice. Thank you for that. Um, so we're going to use a power probe. Now, the reason I'm going to use this power probe, A, the batteries for this coach are directly below this step. So I'm going to connect it to battery. But what that's going to do with, with this is on this tip right here, I'm going to be able to see, and you'll hear the thing turning green and red. You'll hear it beep. And that's going to tell me some voltage issues. And I can read right on the display what my voltage is. So give me a second to make all these connections and I'll introduce you to how this meter works in like a 30 second flyover. And then we're going to start probing into this thing. And what we're going to be looking for is we're going to picking up the... Tr Okay, so folks, what I've done is the batteries right here, I've taken the power probes come with either a uh, the alligator clips here or the cigarette lighter adapter. Since the battery's here, we're gonna use the alligator clips. So move the lavalier cable out of the way. Now I have my, my light, okay? And that's kind of nice. Now this thing has different modes, so I wanna make sure I go to the right mode. I'm gonna go to, not that one. That's the one that I want. So when I, on this meter, when I hit, there's a plus and a minus. So if I go plus, I hit a red plus light and I've turned my tip to plus 12 volts. If I go to the down button, green light, this is now a negative, okay? So I can either induce current plus or minus to my tip or it will tell me what's in the wire. Now let me grab my little tip piece here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna camp out right here and, um, let me, Darren's favorite little pick tool. So I'm going to reach behind, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach behind that connector. I'm going to pry it off. Okay, let's do that again. See that? So by doing that, I'm not yanking on the wire. And at this point, I really, honestly, because I'm going to be using meters, I don't care if it was on the left or the right, because we're going to prove this. I'm approaching this from the perspective of, I don't trust their wiring. If their wiring was right, then it would work. It is not right, therefore it does not work. So I'm going to take their wires off, okay? Using these meters, I'll be able to tell what's right and what's not right, okay? Now you know why I like this tool so much. It's just so perfect on so many different things. I'm getting caught on that. Yeah, I tried to get those off with the needle, needle nose pliers and it was kind of yeah. difficult. So let's pull this out, okay. Gee, do you think it might be on red? So I'm just gonna see what's up. I got nothing there. I got nothing there. You know what? I wonder if this is a fuse related issue. I just got something. Have you checked your fuses? Nope. <laughs> I wonder if this is fuse. We're live folks. We don't script this stuff out. Hold on, I'm <laughs> stuck in the door. Because in order for the awning to work, we need power. Sure. <laughs> So nope, that would have been the next thing. Well, to the check, light turns on. Let's Darren, see what we got the here. The awning light turns on. Shouldn't that mean my awning has power? Excellent question. Thank you. Um, that's not Jody, by the way. Th th that's I, the wife. <laughs> that's the wife. Not necessarily, Miss Jody, because the awning motor is going to have its own 15 amp fuse. The lights are going to have their own fuse. So um, you'll probably have one fuse that says something to the effect of lighting, and then the awning should be its own fuse. Um, and one of the reasons I do that is when the awning extends and retracts, that motor has an inrush and you'll see your lights dim mm -hmm. if it was all on the same circuit. So I wonder if we're chasing a blown fuse, but like I say, folks, we are not scripting this out. This is live. This is, oh, you know what? Hold on, full stop. My lights are off. So <laughs> when I sat, I unplugged myself. Eh. So 
There we go. Okay, so we've just pulled off all the wires with Darren's favorite tool, okay? And um, we have light on this thing. And I'm gonna go to, we know that this works. What is this control? Oh, the floor light, okay, right here. So we know that this switch works. So I need to test my meter against a known good circuit. Okay, so if I'm gonna test a circuit that's suspicious, it'd be good to test it against a known good circuit. So this switch is my known good circuit. Right now it's off, so I'm going to touch in here. Okay, I got a red plus and a high tone, and it's telling me 12.4 volts. Okay, so now my meter, I just tested my meter. Now I'm gonna to go to this side of this known good circuit, and uh, I'm gonna switch the switch, and it comes on. So now I know my meter is working. So one of the things I like to do is when I'm testing an electrical circuit and it's weird like this, I wanna test my meter first to, to, to see what I'm gonna be working with. So that's the first takeaway from all this. Now, now here we have these wires here that go to the awning. So we're gonna just lay them out like this. I'm just gonna to touch. Okay, I have 12 volts on green, 12 volts. Let me get it in there, 12 volts on green. So green looks like it's plus, doesn't it? White is ground, okay? So I got a green and a negative, low tone. Let's go to this white, okay? And then I have this red. I'm going to assume red goes to my awning, okay? Um, now, so I'm going to assume red goes to the awning. Now, I'll be honest, folks, if I was gonna look at this right out of my mind, I would have said, oh, green's ground, red's hot, you know, that's what I would have thought, but in all my years of doing this, don't go by color codes. Please don't do that. I, I just recently went to a training course. What did we cover? Refrigerators, air conditioners, something. If you go to the About Me page and look at all my certificate, it was one of those. And um, the color codes were really weird on, um, I want to say it was air conditioners. Anyway, the question was, uh, maybe it was, it was refrigerators. It was Norcold class. And the question was, well, why are you using green for power or something along those lines? And the engineers that design these boards, they're not trade guys like I came up through the trades where green's ground and, and, and black is positive and white is neutral. It's, they don't come from that. These are engineers that design things with different mm, ideas, etc. cetera. Uh, not that that's the wrong word, but a um, uh, different background. So their attitude, as long as that starts off as a green wire, and goes where it's going and ends as a green wire. It doesn't matter what it's in, it stays the same color. So if that helps, don't assume that red is hot and green is ground. Because in this instance, green with yellow stripe, which in all my training and industrial electrical work and all that kind of stuff, that is as ground as you can get on a piece of equipment. But in this RV, that is a plus. Plus meaning it's hot. So hot meaning it's got 12 volts. So with that, now, here's what we know about a switch. Um, How do you know it's a switch? <laughs> For those of you Monty Python people. Uh, okay, so what I want you to do... <laughs> Does it float? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, what is the airspeed velocity of an unladen okay, swallow? Okay. African or European? I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're having fun out here, folks. Um, okay. So here's what we know about a switch, okay? When you're looking at this switch, I see three prongs. Let's just look at one pole. I have two poles, okay? Let's just look at one pole, okay? So when I'm looking at the switch, the center position, the center pin is what we would call common. And then I'm gonna rock it this way, and I want you to visualize inside, there's like a, a bar attached to that switch and when I rock this way or that way, okay? So when I push this bottom button, let me use my pointy piece. So common is my... Um, it, the, the, this pin in the middle is common to both terminals, okay? So when I push down, then I've connected common to the top pin. When I push, I'll call this up, then I'm connecting common to the bottom pin. So it's opposite. When you push this side, it's gonna come out this one. When I push this side, it's gonna come out this one. So it, it's, it's opposite, if that makes sense. So that's what's visually going on inside of this thing. So just for funsies, um, I want my um, awning to be in the center, okay? Why? Because that's gonna be common. Um, and I'm, gonna, I'm basically flipping the circuit here. So let me, okay, so just for fun, uh, Luke, these marks on these wires, is that something they did or you did? They did. Okay, 
Um, so let's just make an assumption, and we all know what happens when you make an assumption. Um, I'm going to make all the ones with the marks on one side and all the ones without the marks on the other side. Now, how did I know to put the awning in the middle? Because that's the common. Um, okay, so here we go. Nothing. Now, all I'm going to do is change this white. I'm going to just change this around. I'm going to move this white over here and this white over here. So I've changed around. I'll explain this if this works. Still doesn't work. Okay, so now what I need to do, see why I was just wiggling just like that? That's how you're going to break your, your things. So I'm glad this is doing this because this is going to make a really good uh, walkthrough repair video. Um, I need to make that awning work without the switch. I need to become the switch. Okay, so we are going to say that these are the awnings. And remember on this meter, I can go plus. So I'm just going to become plus. Okay. All right. Now, this is interesting because... Uh, Another thing I like about this meter, I just uh, tripped it. I shorted it to ground on purpose, proving that that's ground, proving that this is plus. Um, you know what I'm curious about, guys? Um, I expect when I put 12 volts on, on this, I need one to be plus, one to be minus. That's what we need to do. Hold on. That's what we need to do. I, in order for this awning to work, I think I know what the problem is. There we go. Hey, it's working. Okay, so now I've, the problem was I needed a ground. Okay, I know what to do. Okay, now we're going to make it go the other direction. So we just proved that the red is, in fact, the awning. And now the awning is yep. closing. Okay, we understand. So I think what we need to do is... Okay, red's going to go in the center like it was supposed to. But remember how we had whites on the tops and greens on the bottoms? We need one white on the top and one white on the bottom. And uh, we need, uh, I want to make them twist around. Okay. There we go. I think this is going to make it right. Get in here. Okay, wait, let's just change. See, I'm breaking my own rule, aren't I? Let's put you over here. And you over here. Once I get this to work, um, I'll explain what the problem is. There we go. Okay. There we go. It's working. Okay. So it, the awning works. Now we just need to know is up, out, and down, in. Doesn't matter. I don't know. Okay. So the awning's fine. So again, so look what we've done here. Um, green is plus. Okay. Now, when we're doing the awning, in order, these two red wires go to the awning. So when it goes, I'm going to say positive polarity with respect to the wires, it's going to go clockwise, which is out. When it's negative polarity, it's going to go counterclockwise, which in this instance is in. So these white and greens probably back up in here, they're tied together somewhere. So we've bust our greens, we've bust our whites, but by changing, haven't we changed the polarity on these wires? If, if this one's negative and this one's positive on the top, when I rock, when I rock my switch, then I'm, again, I'm connecting the white one to green. So when I rock my switch down, my white and my green are connected right there. But when I rock my switch the other way, then it's going to be green connected to the same red and white connected to the opposite red. So do you see how I'm trying to get these apart? Do you see how by changing the switch position we we're talking about the switch rocking back and forth by changing the switch position i'm picking up a plus and a minus or a minus and plus just in review um be the electron you're a positive electron and you need to make that motor turn clockwise the way a clock goes or counterclockwise so when i push when i push down then I'm sending negative electrons to this red wire. And on this one, I'm sending positive electrons to this wire. So that was to say that this red wire is negative, And then on the, see, I, I, 
the problem is I understand it. I don't know if I'm explaining it clearly, but if you get this, great. But, but basically what I'm doing is I'm taking that green wire. And remember when I did it here with the power probe and, and the thing, this being ground. Okay, that's the ground. And then I was juicing it with that. And then I switched it. That's how I knew we nailed this thing. Okay, so now we're coming in. So basically I'm picking up the plus and the minus on the bottom side. Folks, I think we're done. Um, I hope this added value to you. I do. Um, hope my rambling and Monty Python strokes didn't bore you to death. <laughs> the rabbit. <laughs> Bring out your dead. Okay. Uh, I'm among friends and I get kind of silly. Uh, and imagine me on scotch. <laughs> okay. Um, we'll do another video here. Yeah, we'll do another video with me on scotch. Let's After have the, the scotch, scotch and then staple the wall. Let's do the scotch then we'll fix the wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, so your awning's in. So we're going to button all this up. But guys, if this was valuable to you, added value or, or whatever, you like my silly jokes, give us a thumb up. We appreciate that. If you like these type of walkthrough repair videos, subscribe to our channel and you'll get noticed. Um, I do promise I've had quite a few people asking me to, to do a video just on some meter knowledge and expertise. And I promise you that is going to be coming up very soon. Um, honestly, most of my videos, almost all my videos, I do not script out. They're live all the warts and zits and everything. And on that meter video, I do want to do you service and um, kind of have some notes available and, and make sure I'm, I'm doing it. And like I said on that, my, my idea is to approach it from, here's a problem, how do we fix it? And then we're going to learn how to use meters and what all the symbols mean and, and how to know what to symbol to put it on. So that's what I'm trying to put together for you guys. Um, so this is Darren and Luke and Jody. <laughs> where... Happy campers say my RV works. Yay. All right. See you guys next video.